Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are solving another lead code challenge, lead code 8, string to integer. We have to mimic the a2i function in C++ and create our own custom my a2i function, which will take a string as an input and will give an integer output. Let's get started. For this one, we'll not be doing any algorithm walkthrough because it's quite straightforward. The idea is that we'll read this string character by character and if we find a number, we'll add that to our number variable and then just create that number with the concept of multiplying by 10. So let's say at the starting I have result as 0 and then I just iterate on the string. dot length plus plus and in here for each character we'll just check if it's an integer or not so let care equals to we'll just try to parse int now we can call it care to int and we'll try to parse the current character now if it's not a number. We'll just break from the loop and return the result. But if it is a number, that means the else condition. In that case, we'll simply add that to our result. So we'll multiply it by multiply result by 10 and then add the integer to it. Let's see how this piece of code will perform. So it worked for the simple test cases like it converted string 42 to integer 42. It converted 4193 with words to 4193 because when it encountered this space and other alphabets, it just breaked from the loop. Now there are some test cases which are failing. For example, here we have some leading white spaces and then a negative sign. So let's deal with these white spaces first. So we can say if the current index is a blank space, then just continue. You, know, you can just skip that and keep moving forward. Let's see what will happen in that case. For negative 42, it still gave 0 as an output because of this minus character. It must have skipped those white spaces, but then it encountered the negative character. So let's handle the negative scenario as well. So let's assume or let's initiate negative as false. And in here, if the current character comes out to be minus, then you set negative to true and you continue to the next character. Similarly, uh, the problem statement says that we can either get a minus sign or a plus sign. So we'll handle plus sign also. We can set negative to false, but since from this string we have to construct just one integer and negative is initially false, we'll just ignore that plus sign. If we don't handle it here, then it will actually run into this situation that it's not a number and will break. So that's why we're handling it. Now if we run this, this test case now gives us 42 but not negative 42. So at the end, let's handle that thing as well. So we can say result equals to if we got negative, then we'll set it to the negation of result. Otherwise, it will be just result. Now that test case will also pass. Okay. Now these basic test cases are passing, but there are some other things that we have to take care of. For example, let's add a case. Instead of this, 
let's say we have a number afterwards this should return a zero let's see what will happen okay that worked as expected another test case is if we add a string that goes like plus minus 12 or plus minus 1 to 3 this should not be parsable to a valid integer so i should get zero let's see what we'll get so we got minus 1 2 3 as an output whereas the expectation was that we'll get a zero as an output now to handle such scenarios we'll handle a very we'll add a very simple condition that is if the current character is minus sign or if it's a plus sign and the next character is a non digit like if i'm having minus then after that i should have the digit immediately in this case after plus it's a non digit with some which is a minus so s of i plus 1 should exist and s of i plus 1 Um, should be a number so if we want to check that it should be a number we can add the we can try to pass it to an int first and then we can check if it's not a number in that case you know we'll break away from the loop okay that should take care of a test case like this Okay, that is working as expected now for these white spaces we're only checking for the white spaces that are in the beginning of the text what if there are white spaces in the middle of text how will our program behave in that case the problem statement says that we have to ignore the leading white spaces but if there are any white spaces in between then it's not a valid number For example, if we create a test case like this, which has 42 with some leading white spaces and after 4 there's 2 more spaces and then there's a 2. Let's see what will happen. It gives the output as 42, whereas it should have only given 4 as the output. And that is because we are simply ignoring these white spaces without any other logic but the problem statement says that we have to ignore only the leading white spaces and to handle that i'll, I'll introduce one more variable that says um, searching for number which will be true initially now when we are reading through the string as we read it character by character we are searching for numbers and if we found a white space and we are searching for numbers we'll just continue when we have found a number which is here we'll set searching for number to false okay that should take care of this scenario let's see how that goes so now after four when we got the white space <clears throat> we did not run this if condition because we were no longer searching for numbers we already found four and we got to the is nan condition and we broke away from the loop so we got 4 as the output. Now I think we can submit this. Let's see. Oh, now comes the range condition. So the problem says that if the integer is out of 32 bit signed integer range, then we have to clamp it to the boundary values. So here we'll just make a check and again. 2 to the power 31 is this value so we'll just copy it if result is less than this we'll return that value in negation also if result is greater than 2 to the power 31 minus 1 in need of these brackets we'll just return that value 
Helix for a minute. Okay, now only four test cases are failing. Let's have a look at those as well. So here, after we have found minus four two. Okay, after we have got the zeros and then there's a minus, our program is still reading it through that and giving minus 42 as an output because there's an A after it. But the expectation is that it should be just zero because a negative in the middle of a number makes no sense. Once we are saying that, you know, this number is zero. For that, we'll just add this searching for number condition to our negative check as well, as well as to our positive check. So now after adding this condition, when we encounter a minus in the middle of our numbers, the searching for number will be false because it will be set to false as soon as we encounter zero. And then this condition will not run and will break away from the loop because minus is a non digit character. Let's submit that. Okay, there we have it. We were able to solve this in 95 milliseconds and we used 45 MBs of memory. Now, for the memory, it might not look like the most optimal solution. So I just went ahead and tried to see how are people able to solve it with so less memory. So let's look at maybe this one. So they are just using the built-in JavaScript methods to solve this problem, which I don't think is the idea behind solving any of the lead code problems. So that's why in here we used our own conditions rather than using the built-in functions. I hope I was able to help. If you have any questions with the concept, you can put that in the comment section below. If you liked the video, please share it with your friends so they can also benefit from it. Please subscribe to the channel for more learning content. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.